everybody, here we are back in my workshop. My name is Colwyn Way and this is part of the Bringing the Skill Centre to your home. Now you might notice something has changed, we've lost a banner. Um, bear with me, don't worry, nothing drastic, it doesn't mean anything drastic, but uh, just bear with us, there might be a nice shiny new banner turning up um, in the next few weeks. Um, today we're going to look at um, doing some little tea light holders. So something, um, quite, I would have said, um, quite a basic little project, but something open to everybody um, and you can, you know, um, make them a little bit more difficult um, d depending on your, your experience. So that's the, the job today. A little tea light holder, we will get you in nice and close in a moment. Um, that's a nice bit of elm, but we're going to look at how we drill it out, hollow it out, a um, little bit of decoration on the bottom potentially. I've got several pieces of timber here. I'm going to bring you in closer in a moment and we're just going to talk about the candles and um, and the barriers from uh, from the naked flame and all those sorts of things. As usual, there's all sorts of work holding um, on the laser to look at. There's all sorts of tools to use, um, a little bit of sanding, some different finishes today that we're going to go with as well. So Finley's behind the camera. If you get any questions, let Finley know. It's the usual sort of style. Ask him anything and um, he'll relay it on. And if I know the answer, then you'll you'll get the answer as we go. Um, this is today, it's on Thursday, yeah, we're Tuesday, aren't we? Thursday, um, we're gonna look at everything pen making. So I'm gonna make a couple of pens for you. Something that we haven't done yet. Um, it's usually Ben the pen um, that uh, that does those for us, the other skill set the tutor. Um, but uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a go at doing a couple for you on Thursday. So let's get started anyway, straight into the into the project. So Finn, come on over a little bit. Let's have a look at all my uh, my bits uh, here. Um, now, Tuesdays, Thursdays, I don't just rock up five minutes before the, um, the video uh, and get ready and shoot. We do a lot of preparation. So this morning, well, I've been looking at all, all sort of having to think about what I can do for you. And so I've been playing around with a few different ideas, but this is the one that we're going to go with. So this sort of shape here, I quite like this shape and I like having things in sets of um, of threes or fives, sort of odd numbers, that sort of thing. So what I thought we could do is, I was going to do a set of three, but then I thought, actually, no, let's just do a set of two here, but I want to show you a different type of candle cut. So this one here, this is what we would traditionally call as a tea light. So we've got the little liner, okay? Um, we're going to look at drilling as well. We've got a, a, an interesting looking drill bit to use. Um, a little liner there. So that's our traditional tea light little tea light candle, you can get these anywhere, just pop in there. You have to have the barrier, certainly the rules and regulations in terms of, of um, candles uh, and wood, you must have either a glass or metal barrier between that and the timber. Um, and I would definitely recommend that that is fixed into your timber as well, really, really important. Um, that's one type. Now the other type I thought I'd look at, I buy a lot of these for things like light angels and um, uh, Christmas, um, uh, what they call them, candle arches, that sort of thing. And in those, I use the uh, traditional um, Christmas tree candles. Believe it or not, naked flames used to be mounted on Christmas trees. Um, we shudder at the thought of it now, of course, but this is uh, the non-drip um, candles um, that you light and so the wax evaporates rather than dripping down. So I thought maybe let's do one of those. So in this small piece of timber, I'm going to do a small one, which we can then fix that candle in, just a single um, candle cup there. But on this other big one, we're going to put the other um, candle cup in like that one. Okay, so we've got a little bit to do today, but um, hopefully it's going to give you a few ideas as well. I could have gone down the whole Christmas route, but I've, as I said last week, we are only in July still. We're not even in August yet. So let's hang on to Christmas until at least September, um, and then we can go all guns blazing. So let's start with, I don't know, let's start with that one. Let's start with the big one and then we'll go to the smaller version. So this is how I make these. Um, we're gonna have several options really. So I'm gonna start off with a screw chuck. Now just in preparation, I've already got the hole there. Um, I'm gonna then create a foot on here, sacrificial foot that we'll take off. This is a lovely piece of burr um, elm, by the way. It's a really, really nice piece, um, but that's what we're, going. Now I might lose a little bit of that top there actually. It's a little bit um, ragged on the edge. Well, I could keep it natural. We'll see. We'll see what we look like. Just a quick question. Um, yeah. Does Axminster sell the cups? 
Now, unfortunately, at the moment, no, we don't. So I source these. I actually source all my candle cuts from Germany. But you know what I'm like when it comes to my Christmas decorations and that German area, um, uh, the Eastern Germany that uh, are really famed for their um, Christmas decorations. But I buy them all from um, that village, Siphon, and I, uh, I go online to get them from there. But there's loads of places online. You don't have to do that. You can stick to this country or even Amazon, places like that, wherever, um, to, source your, um, to source your candle cups. I'm hoping one day we will. We are looking. We are looking. Right, I'm just looking for a screw chuck. There we are, screw chuck. All right, so traditional screw chuck fits into the C jaws, look. Okay, got my chuck on there with the C jaws in, that just mounts in. Two packing pieces, because the screw as is, is a little bit too deep. So packing pieces on. The hole I've drilled in my piece of timber is eight millimeters. Okay, and we can screw that all the way on. I'm thinking I'm gonna leave this, you know. This might be nice brushed out. It's a bit of the burr and the grain matches the movement in that, uh, in that area. So I think I'll probably keep that. All I need to do though first is create a foot for my um, jaw. And in this case, I'm gonna use the OD 112s. Can everybody see that all right, Finn? This is the one, one, twos. I'm going to make a foot, so I'm just going to measure internally. Um, can we just rule. can we just move the light a little bit? Yes. Is that Sorry. That's fine. Right. And how are we doing for light? Is that bleaching? Is that too much or a bit too much? A bit too much. Okay. Forty millimeters. I need to make my um, internal. Sorry, external foot. You could go internal and keep it as part of the base if you want to, but I'd rather have a nice flat base. Um, where I can put a bit of decoration in if, if I wish. Double check that. Yeah, 40 mil. So a little foot I'm making. Lay speed to zero. Turn the speed up. Can see this face all right, Finn? In this face, all right? Yeah. Just bring the light a little bit higher. There we go, yeah. So just using my dividers, there's the foot. Little farting tool. Um, could you just repeat where you got the, um, where you got the light from? My light, um, I got this at Maker Central. Um, Maker Central, um, a, a show on in the NEC last year. Um, unfortunately because of the situation in the world at the moment. It was cancelled this year, but hopefully they'll be back next. Um, the make is Glowforce. So if you search Glowforce, they're actually best known for their glues. But they have a whole range of these. Um, well, they do this like with a whole range of brackets and things, and they're lovely lights. Magnetic, um, you can get mobile phone holders, iPad holders, they're a phone charger, all sorts of things. So I, I, well, you've seen, I use this one all the time. Take it away with me when I go away. Just keep it charged overnight. Takes about two hours to charge when it goes down. There we are, that's all we would do. Now I've prepped the others, or the other one, so I don't need to do that one. We're just gonna work on this. So that can come off, screw chuck can come out and we can swap our chucks over. If you're not um, fortunate enough to have two chucks, most people won't, um, then just swap jaws obviously, rather than chucks. So we're going with the ODs now. That's what I sized that foot for. So I'm going to start off just by skimming that outside edge first. Base speed to zero, only because I've swapped everything around, so I like to start 
in control, so I know where everything is speed-wise. At the moment, I'm running there at 1,200 revs. So I'm going to go to a slightly bigger gouge now. So I'm going to go to a 3.8 or 10 mil bowl gouge. I'll skim the outside edge. I'm just going to have a quick look, see where we are in terms of fully round. So, okay, there's a little bit of a bounce or mark there. So just another skim and there, look. So a little bit more. So if I drop the tool handle now, I'll use a skew cut. Um, another question. Um, someone's just asking, what angle do you grind your signature skew? Um, signature skew is 25 degrees on both sides. 25 degrees. You don't have to do don't, um, quite as severe as that. You can go down to 15 degrees if you're if you're accomplished with the skew. But if you're having trouble with skew, about 25 degrees will really help, help you. Uh, and another question also, um, is that a, a spigot or a dovetail? Um, I've just done a very small dovetail. Just a very small dovetail, just with the skew. Right, we're going to Look at the drill bit in a moment. I'm just going to true up that face though and get the profile that I want. So I'm going to have a very slight radius there. If you look at this one, we've sort of gone in at a, a slight radius. It's not dead flat. Um, and someone was just asking, um, in the future, is there any chance of doing a, an off-center bowl with the Axminster eccentric chuck as one of the demos? We'll do something with the Axminster eccentric chuck, but the, an offset bowl is not it's not the right project for that chuck, I don't I don't think. I think it's probably a bit too big. I think that's really the smaller project um, is doable with the chuck. Let me have a look into it. I, I'll have a play. I'll have a play. Let, in the next couple of weeks, um, we'll see if we can do something, even if it's something small. Right, speed's up now to 1600. There we go, so lay speed down. All I was doing there is just making that dish in there. Now, I can start drilling out. I've left that little bit there. We're gonna keep that as part of it. That's gonna be my 10 pound feature. Okay, so there we are. There's the drill bit. I've already checked to make sure the lathe is running um, uh, accurately. So i um, done the kiss test where I brought the two centers up together, made sure they met. I've done that already, so I'm happy. Lay speed to zero, start the machine off. We're gonna drill between 900 and 1,000 on this particular drill bit. There we are, 900. My hand can stay on there, that's fine. Let's get rid of the tool rest. Hand on there. And I know where I'm going. I've already checked, where's my pencil? I've already checked for depth. I need to be going just there. All right, but we'll have another check in a moment. Uh, someone was just asking, um, what angle do you do your spindle gouges? Uh, spindle gouge is 45. 45 um, degrees. Bowl gouge is 55 degrees. Let's just double check that uh, candle barrier. Oh, wrong one. Open up my cutter a little bit. Didn't do that in practice this morning. My cutter's moved a little bit. Let me just open him up. Rather than open him up and then do a messy cut, I'll just turn, open that up with uh, a turning tool. 
these are really good cutters so what happens um, you can extend the cutter out so you can basically can make it um, uh, adjustable just by slackening this one off and moving it out uh, I didn't tighten up hard enough so now that's moved in a little bit so it's made it a slightly smaller hole so I'll just open it up with a skew um, Team Axminster are putting numbers up again hopefully um, we've had a chat this morning everything I'm using so um, the numbers that they're going to put up are for the adjustable cutter okay that one there and then there is a 42 millimeter um, fish wave cutter um, or force a bit um, which is perfect for these guys because these are 41 mil okay that section there's 41 millimeters so the fish wave cutter or force a bit is the best one now I'm just gonna skim open that surface uh, someone was just asking where did you get your cutter yeah axe minister axe yeah minister. so the adjustable one and the fish force a bit at 42 mil both from axe minister there we are just skim that open a wee bit check on that just to make sure there we are good as new perfect right so that's one good surface so let's tidy up the outside edge and put our shape in now you can go crazy with texturing you can put uh, different color finishes on these if you want to do all sorts of things I'm gonna keep keep it as the timber let the wood do the talking So I'm just going to keep going until I'm happy with the shape. Not a lot to do on this sort of very simple sort of Japanese style form. The very bottom here is going to be sorted in a minute. So we're going to we're going to um, just clean that up in a minute. We'll rehold the center. Now that's a lovely bit of timber. You've got some real rippling going on as well down there. That's okay. I think we can carry on and start sanding that now. So usual thing, dust extractor is gonna go on. We're gonna start with 100 grit, work our way through to 150, 240, 400, and then a bit of sanding sealer and a bit of dark. I'm gonna put dark wax on this and I'll show you in a minute. So dust extraction on. <laughs>
cellulose sanding sealer here. And I've diluted that sealer with 50% thinners. Uh, can you just repeat where you got the um, tea light cups from? Yeah, tea lights, I get them from um, a company in Germany called Rudolf's Treasure Chest. And they're based in Seifen in Eastern Germany. I'll be honest, the best way to source them is um, Amazon. Um, unless you know German, their site isn't translated at all. Uh, someone was just asking how come you're not using a bowl sander? Um, I don't need to. It's not. Um, it's a nice small little project. I'm, I, I'm, I always prefer a hand sander where possible. I use the bowl sander to um, complement the hand sanding when I'm bowl turning, just to help me speed things up a little bit, that's all. Um, but there, that's good, that's gone. So, sanding sealer, 50-50 remember, cellulose sealer and cellulose thinners. And we're gonna cover over. You can, actually, before you start, you could, if you've got burr like this, just give that a bit of a brush out. Just so you get right on there. Then, cover all over. I've uh, just got another question. Um, someone's just asking if they've missed the finishing lure and float demo or haven't been done yet. Well, I didn't do I forgot all about that. <laughs> right, I'll tell you what, next week, next week, sorry about that, I completely forgot one of my favourite things as well. Um, right, yes, yeah, so we will do that of Tuesday of next week. You, we're going to make some fishing lures and some fishing floats. We're going to add some cork in there as well. That's quite a nice little demo, that one. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, this week, we're gonna, once we finish these, Thursday we're gonna start looking at um, pens, and then Tuesday's our fishing demo. So all the fishermen out there, we'll do a mixture. Well, I'm gonna do a bass lure, we're gonna do some airbrush techniques on that, and we're gonna do some nice um, fishing floats. Right, there we are. Because of the 50-50, Thanks for reminding me, whoever that was. Um, because of the 50-50 cellulose thinners and sealer, this evaporates really quickly. I'm just gonna cover my phone, so I'll protect my phone. I'm just gonna turn that speed up a little bit, just to get rid of some of that sealer that's gone into those little voids in the burr. What I want to do now is once that's dry, just give it another little sand back. This is going to lock the grain in, stop it from pricking up in the future. And we're going to sand back very slow speed with a 600 grit abrasive. go one of the other things I'd like to do for you next week is um, look at the new branding of the Axminster Chucks and um, I know we keep getting a lot of questions about starter packages for people that are just starting out um, on their turning journey and I thought what we could do is we'll get the three different Chucks in their starter packages and look what Chuck is for really for which lathe what's what's his aim for that sort of thing so we'll get them get them for thursday of next week uh can you just repeat what they are doing the pens the pens is going to be this thursday so after today the next session basically there we are so that's a bit now i'm using liberal on there and this one this is actually a victorian mahogany but it's i just wanted something dark to go over that lovely um, dark elm. What I sometimes find is the clear, the neutral, um, or certainly the neutral wheel, or some of the microcrystallines, because they're a white, sort of milky color, they can pick out the grain and you'll see them. So the darker waxes sometimes work in your favor. Gives a real nice finish. Now, the holes in this timber are gonna take a little bit of the tissue in. That's fine, we'll brush it out. So my first buffing here is just to take off the excess wax. We're then gonna brush with a little dry brush just to get in all those voids and then we'll rebuff again with a clean bit of tissue. You're, uh, you're 25 minutes in. Oh, well done, yeah, well, we can rush through the, the second one a little bit quicker. There we are, so stop the lathe, 
dry brush, go to all those little holes and little voids, brush out any excess wax, and, um, bits of tissue, that sort of thing, then rebuff. go right look at that wonderful bit of timber isn't that pretty there's some real nice streaks running down through there so now let's turn him over now the jewels i'm using here are known as od 112s inch and a half it's too big to put inside there so i'm going to swap jaws again okay if i had the od ones not a problem i'd just be able to slot that over work brilliantly so if you've got the od ones perfect if you have Okay, the pin jaws, again, that would work. You know me, I'm gonna go straight to my go-to jaws, so my engineering top jaws, because they're at hand, I've got them and I'm used to them, okay? There's lots of safer alternatives out there. This is where I'm going. And that's just gonna turn upside down. I'm gonna expand. There, and now we can do something with the base of this little tea light holder. At the moment, it's just got that sacrificial foot, so let's go with a little quarter inch gouge. Base speed starting off at zero. Turning the speed up. We're going to have a mess around with the bottom here. We're not going to keep it plain. We're going to do something with it. Uh, someone was just asking, why not use the push plate? Push plate. Because I've got the hole there. Hole's easy. I can just expand. You could use the push plate. I want to I want to put a little bit of decoration in here, though. So I want it full access. But absolutely, go with the push plate. That would work well. Um, and then do what we've done with all the other bowls. Then just the little sand or just the sand off that little nib. You'll see though in a minute, this is why I need full access. Let's start with, let's start with 100 grit again. We're going to start sanding, but then we're going to go to a little bit of texturing as well. So the reason I don't texture then sand, so I just need to get the worst sanding out of the way before I start texturing. Otherwise, we're just going to sand away our pans. There we go. So that was a 150 I've just done there. So now let's go to 40. center without a recess. And then we'll frame those just with a little line from the skew. Gentle, just 
a little brush with that that suede brush before we go back to uh, 400 grit. If you want to do a timber that's a little bit more or a little bit plainer than this one you could use different color waxes so the enhancing waxes like the um uh the hampshire sheen embellishing waxes uh, the chestnut gilt creams all those sorts of things just leave them to dry a little bit but all those sorts of things um what's it liming wax black wax verdigris all those sorts of Colors. Oh, we've got a question here from Martin. He's just asking if you can use the micro spiraling tool. Yes, yeah, answer any of those. Um, the I picked up the, the Elf because it was the right sort of size for this sort of project, but no, absolutely. Right, let's get that brush back. Make sure any of the debris out. I'll show you properly in a moment. You know, it's always nice. You can have this. You could do exactly the same on the top of this candle holder. All right, but it's nice to have something in the bottom just to show you taking that little bit of extra care. Uh, we've also got one here from Chris. Um, just asking, well, in fact, um, we mentioned a couple of weeks back that we would do something on the Axminster to drive centers and the various types that they sell as well. Yeah. Yeah, leave that one with me, Chris. I say leave it with me because I want to make it a demonstration that we can do that's actually going to make something interesting, but at the same time, use as many as possible. Um, I first thought that the same with the chucks, that we could potentially do a separate um, video for you. Um, but I'll have a think about that one again. Now, I'm not getting that right, that light right, but that's quite a nice little little feature in the bottom. Like I say, that sort of feature in the top would be quite nice, I think, as well. But let me just put the candle in the candle cup in. Um, there we are. There's our little, our little candle cup or little tea light holder. We're going to make another one now with a slightly different barrier. But that's first two. If I put that one next to our other one, that one there. We've already got a couple of different sizes going on. All right, so that's the first two. We're going to move on, move on to the next. Now, if you remember the next one, slightly different. I'm going to use a smaller piece and we've got a smaller little candle holder. I'm going to make this more of a pointed one. Um, Finn, can you just write down for me? Because I don't want to forget these things. That's what happened with the fishing floats earlier. Um, so put uh, fishing floats Tuesday. What did I say on Thursday? Pens. No, that's this Thursday's pens. Right, so then we're gonna go with the ODs again, O'Donnell's. There we are. Same thing, and then again, we always talk production in production terms so if you're doing a few of these you, you do all of the feet first before you move on now let me just take that down to a cylinder can you put wood turning centers down there as well now lay speed to zero turn the machine on i'm just going to clean up that, uh, that area
let's have a thing. What shall we do shape-wise here? Let's do. The, let's go the opposite way. So let's go. We'll taper up like a cone to that diameter there. So if I have a quick measurement on that one. So that one. So if, let's say 40 mil. Forty millimeters at the top. We'll drill our hole. There we are. That's where we're tapering from. Um, is this also a piece of elm? This is, yeah. It's all elm that we're using today. There we are. Now don't worry, we are going to tidy this up in a minute. Um, I just need to drill. You can't use the, the um, chuck that I just used, the... Um, my knuckle dust is those old engineering jaws because the holes can be much smaller on this so we only need a 15 mil hole on this one so drill chuck again swap the drill out and we're going to go for the smaller drill So 15 mil, remember, on this piece. Lay speed down a wee bit, down to about a thousand revs. You're just coming up to 40 minutes in. And then. Get the drill chuck out of the way because we're going to now do a little taper and then we can just refine the shape we'll put the um, we'll put the barrier the little bit of brass barrier in just to make sure everything fits okay so a little quarter inch pole gouge again let's get our laser speed up up there to 1800 Right, so we'll have a little test just to see how that barrier fits. All right, so I just need to do more of a taper. The actual curvature on here is greater than I've got on there at the moment, so we need to sort that out. There we are. that's better. There's a much better fit there, look. Okay, happy with that. And also there's enough timber here. I'm not, uh, we haven't got a sharp edge protruding out. So that's, that's fine. So let's clean the edges up. And I think what we could do on this one in particular, let's put some little lines in here. Let's make it, I'll do them quite deep. So I'll do them before sanding in this case. So if I use my really pointed skew, nice and gentle. Just put a little passing cut in where I'm going to take this off to. There we 
are. Now we're sand. Same process now, so back through the grades. Tell you what, whilst we're away doing this, so I'm going to go from my 100 to 150 to 4400, just as a little bit of fun. There's loads and loads of people watching in the UK, I know that. But if you're not in the UK, just drop the country you're watching from. Let's see how many different countries we can get this afternoon. So just out of interest, just for everybody. And I'm going to start sanding. to do too much to the inside but I want to make sure the edge that actually appears you can you can see that it's sanded. with cellulose is that it doesn't really matter about dust and shavings they're not going to stick to it as long as you wipe off that excess nice and quick and there we are before it dries but you know you've got loads of time really um, not, you know enough time not to panic at least there we are just take away that excess Pretty pretty timber. There's lots of stuff happening with that. Right then, so that's dry enough, let's go with a little bit of 600 grit. Have you got any other countries, Finn? Yeah, we've got France, Portugal, just got one from Norway, um, all up and down the UK as well. Excellent. There we are. I think that's okay. A little bit of wax on there, so we're going to use the dark wax. off the excess first. Get that dry brush just to take out the excess wax. Especially if you've got, got grooves like that, you, it's quite easy to leave it in there. But then any burrs that you, you 
that you'll see any of those deep fissures, just get rid of that wax before you do your final butt. Uh, I've got a question here from Keith. Um, are the only jaws that you can put in um, the inserts in okay? Sorry. Say that again. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Are the OD jaws that you can put the inserts in okay? Absolutely. Abs yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Bang on. They'd be perfect. Right. I'll park that one off a minute. I haven't got a. I haven't left myself a huge amount of space, but. Sorry, you couldn't see a thing I was doing next to my hand was in the way. But we're just parting off nice and gentle when you're parting off. If you um, if you part too aggressively, you'll end up with a really big area here to clean up. So it's quite important. So what we'll do now, reverse it on the lathe. Now we're going to go with the other suggestion, push plate, or a variation on the push plate. We're going to do a friction chuck, a jam chuck, but to jam inside here. Um, because I will want to just clean up that very underside and, and put a couple of lines in. So. Here we go, so let's just clean that area up. And that little nib that we have there is a perfect point for me to be able just to put another little centre point in. You're just over 45 minutes in. That's perfect. Just before we do that, let me show you that's going to fit in there. And then our little candle. So it's a slightly different style, okay, than the other one. Quite a sweet little piece. All right, we'll do them both together in a minute, but let's finish this one off first. There we are. We've got the C, the um, O'Donnell jaws on there, so we may as well keep on with those. Let's get a little scrap bit of timber. There's a bit. Um, we just got a question here asking if it's okay to um, open the chucks and replace the grease with dry lube. Um, I, I don't need. You wouldn't need to replace the grease. There is graphite grease inside. Um, if you're thinking oh, you've just bought a chuck and it's spitting at you a little bit, that's a very temporary thing. All I would suggest is just leave the lathe running for a, a sort of 10-15 minutes um, to let that grease just come out of the, um, the pinions here. It's not the actual grease coming out, it will stop for quite quickly. Um, but the whole point of a graphite grease is that it's very stiff, it doesn't keep coming out. It's not like a chainsaw grease for instance. Uh, trains to oil it, it will stop eventually so you know I wouldn't bother I, I would just keep it going I've never had an issue well as I've done that that first day of a new chuck yeah it never spits at you again uh, the, the chuck is apparently over a year old it's still making a bit of a mess is it that's surprising I'll be honest um, I'm intrigued with that one that's nothing I've never ever seen that issue before um, right just drop me a drop me um, a line through this or contact me at uh, at axminster so it's colwyn.way at axminstertools.com and then also the um, the finishes that are used they need to be fire resistant Um, the Naked Flame is going to go nowhere near the timber. Um, yes, in a, in a way, but I'm using cellulose. The cellulose would have evaporated, then I'm using a wax over the top. None of them are rated as fire resistant, um, but you're not going to get the Naked Flame near it. That's the whole point of having a, a candle barrier. It's got to be metal or, or um, glass, that's stipulated. Um, you can't just have your candle inside the um, the wooden rock, because as soon as it burns down to zero, then you're going to be all sorts of bother. Um, so no, that's not in the reg. And I'm not bound by regulations or anything like that, but again, common sense. For me, um, I'm not going to go overboard when it comes to the, the, the finishes and, and a naked candle, purely because I'm not going to get that in contact with the... Um, the project and could you just tell everyone uh, where you got the candles from uh, Germany um, siphon so um, I, have a, I wish I really wish I brought some information with me 
Um, it's called Rudolph. The translation of his website is Rudolph's Treasure Chest. Um, go online. So this is an Amazon purchase. Look for that sort of box. <laughs> That's all I can say, really. Um, by the next. Kenley, remind me, just write down that bit of paper. Information on the candles for next time. There we are. So that's our little drive centre. And then tail stock centre, we'll just have a, a single pointed centre. Take the tail stock out a little bit. I'll put my light back on just so I can see what I'm doing. There we are, and I'm just going to clean that up. Going to use the side scrape with a parting tool. We were talking about the side scrape with a parting tool last time, actually. Um, it was quite a useful little technique. Laser speed to zero, turn the machine on. Do a rough sanding first. So 100. Put that extractor on a minute. Time for now. Just coming up to 55 minutes. 55 minutes coming up. Yeah. Wow. Where did that time go? <laughs> crazy thought for the minute that I'd try and do that just with the um, just off friction but it wasn't going to be enough so let's use my sander so nice little go-to set of drawers my little engineering set here but you can use pin drawers of course like I said and I'm going to put a small Just a small sanding head in. Right, let's go for a two inch, 50 mil. Just tickle away that last little bit on the bottom. buff this of course on the buffers as well so we've got another bit of texturing going on on the bottom of that one okay Finn if you could pan back let's have a look at these together we have a little one a little candle cup 
And then we have our other two. An individual candle in. So in the meantime, between now and Thursday, Rudolph's treasure chest, Rudolph's belt, Rudolph, and treasure chest belt in German, and I can't remember what the translation is at the minute. Uh, I'll get you the information ready for next Thursday. Remember, the pen day is on Thursday. Um, so there we are, a couple of little uh, tea lights or candle holders. Um, I didn't want to go down the Christmas route yet, so we've made them sort of for all year round sort of thing. Guys, I hope you've really enjoyed that. Again, as usual, it's a rush. We use the full hour, don't we? Um, so pens on Thursday. Until then, have a fantastic um, couple of evenings of turning or days of turning. Uh, I'll see you on Thursday, same time, same place in my workshop. I've been Colin Thank you very much. See you on Thursday.